myself angita tiwari from lg institute of engineering and technology from idea sir department i am going to take a session from the subject that is some division subject code is 3171614 the module that we are going to cover is module number 5 module name is camera calibration the topic that we are going to do, do is camera parameters basically from projection matrices that is orthographic peak perspective a fine and perspective camera models so basically we are going to do the camera parameters from the projection matrix of the different camera models that we already have and we have already studied that is orthographic peak perspective a fine okay so these are the different parameter that we are going to study today and this is the last topic of this chapter moving forward first of all what is the computer vision camera model we have so the camera model here you can see as an optical center we have with respect to that we have an optical frame we can say that an image frame where the p is the point as in center point which is defined with the projection point p okay means direct projection from optical center to the beam point that we are taking it with respect to the focal distance f so these are the different parameters that we need to know whenever we are knowing the camera model okay moving forward in the camera model we are having the two of the uh parameter that is defined with u and f so where we can say that f of xc upon zc or we can say the f of yc upon zc so we can say that a full perspective projection is a non linear and the formula for finding the particular scaling factor is defined by u and p which is defined by f upon zc okay where xc and yc are the two parameters that we are taking or we can say pixel that we are taking for a particular coordinate system or the camera so here the please note f we can say that is an image distance okay and the distance between the lens center and the image plane it is not the same that is the focal length though it is close to the focal now the first projection that we are already knowing it as we can say the orthographic projection as a special case of the weak perspective projection that we have when the f upon z see that we have already seen the factor if it is if it is equal to 1 that means we have u is equal to xc same directly if we are putting the value as 1 that is f upon zc is equal to 1 we will get direct xc same will apply to b also that is b is equal to b divided by c so we can say that the lines that the rays we can say of the projections will be parallel to the optical axis the projection rays will meet in it in the infinite instead of the lens center it will not meet at a particular point it will go infinite because it is parallel so this leads to the sizes of the images and the object as say so basically this is called orthographic projection and this orthographic projection will lead to any of the parameter that we are defining it okay so here the coordinate system with respect to the tag in the diagram form it is defined like q bar and p we are having an object okay the circle object we are having the two points p and d we are taking in a projection okay that means orthographic particularly it is coming on the plane okay and in that plane you can see that the plane is been totally um, you know it's parallel the projection that we are taking is totally parallel with respect to the center point o and the three of the vertices the three of the uh, uh, frame that is i j and k the two or three of the uh, planes we can say that so uh, this is what the orthographic projection geometry is the perspective projection geometry here if we are discussing it then we are having a perspective center this p We are having a focal length that is I. As you can see, the point between both of the images. We are having a principal point which is in an image frame. We are also having the image frame with respect to the U value and the B value. Okay. With respect to that, we are also having the object frame. You can see that x, y, and z, the whole coordinate system where it is defined. Now that is defined with respect to the image frame. Now the camera plane is taken means the center point C C is defined with the camera frame. Now. the image plane with respect to the focal length we need to find out the distance so that is what the perspective center is from the perspective center if we are going to the principal point we can say the camera frame or center the distance between that is the focal length and we need to get this point as in very important point because focal length is very very important to understand with respect to that only the distance between the two of the planes with respect to that the object is being captured so here all of the parameters that is defined for a particular projection geometry is defined in the diagram okay moving forward the notations that we are using it that let's suppose p is equals to x y z crest to d be a 3d point in the object that is world frame 
and u that is uv has to be the corresponding image point in the image frame before digital digital image so let's suppose example like suppose x is equals to x e by z z with respect to t because here the point is defined so here p we are taking with respect to x be the coordinates of p in the camera frame and p the projection that we are taking with c r with respect to t be the coordinates of u in the row column that is frame after the digitization so this is what the two notation that we are going to use it now what is the projection process projection process is basically defined our goal is to go through the projection process to understand how an image point that is c and r is generated from the 3d point that is x y z so here the 3d point in the object frame with respect to affine transformation the first step that we are going to do is the affine transformation because the affine transformation is a combination of rotation and translation so that is being given to the perspective projection that is 3d point in the camera frame and that is being given to the spatial sampling that is the image point in the image frame and from the image uh, that is spatial sampling the coordinate transformation that we have already take place from the 3d to the 2d view the point will be placed in the row column frame that is x y that is 2d point so this is how the 3d uh, point in an object frame is represented in 2d form where we need to take that as an object moving forward the relationship between the different frames that we have we need to understand this concept then and only then the different models we will be going to understand it so between the camera frame that is cc and the object frame that is co okay the object o the camera frame that is c xt xc is equals to rx plus c we have already defined we have already using this formula rx plus t same thing will be applied to y also so here because we are taking the value as x so x is the 3d coordinates we can say of p with respect to the object frame R is the rotation matrix we are already knowing it, and T is the translation matrix that we already have. So R and T we basically specify the orientation that we are going to take first rotation, then translation, and the position of the object frame relative to the camera frame. So they are often collectively called the poses of the object. Where R and T can be parameterized as we can see here, R is equal to the R the rotational matrix, T is the translation matrix that T is T by T by, and R is the three by three matrix that we already studied. in the last lecture also and in the first lecture also that we have already studied in the computer vision so r of i we can say that r of i1 r of i2 r of i3 we suppose 1 by 3 that is 1 cross 3 row vector so r can be written as we can say that r is equals to r1 r2 r3 okay so with respect to that substituting the parameterized that is t and r into the equation one that we already defined that is rx plus t1 xc yc zc is equals to R one one that is matrix rotational matrix R in two x plus t. Okay, t x t by t z. Okay, so this is the simplest and the easiest and the projection factor. We can say this it's a it's a relation between the different frame that we need to find it out. So between the image frame, the two the another concept that we are taking for the different frame between the image frame that is C O I and the camera frame that is C C perspective projection is defined by U and V. As is equal to f of x c upon z c, f of y c upon z c. Hence, we can say that x c is equal to center coordinate with respect to x and y value, x c y c z c. And lambda is the function that we are taking it with the vector u v n. Okay. So here, where lambda is equal to x c upon f is a scalar, and f is the camera focal length. F is the frame for focal length, and lambda is the x c upon f that is scalar vector that we have. So between the image frame C of I and the row column frame that is C of T, we can say the quantization process C O and R is defined by the S X zero zero S Y into U V plus C zero R. So where we can say S X and S Y are the scaling factors that is pixels due to the special quantization, and C zero and R zero are the coordinates of the principal point in the pixel relative to C. Now here the lambda into C R one is equal to S X F of R one plus C zero R three. It is defined with respect to S X F of T X plus C zero T X. S Y the scaling factor with respect to the second column F of R one R two plus R zero of R three. S Y F of T Y plus R zero of T Z. R three T X which is defined the two of the matrices because scaling factor will be defined only with the two points that is X and Y. Third point is the homogeneous coordinate point that is one. So we are not defining for that particular scaling factor. So there it will be only R three and T S T Z, which is defined as a P as in perspective projection matrix, and the, it is multiplied with the scaling the mat the vector the value as X Y Z and one. 
where R1, R2, R3 are the row vectors of the rotational matrix that is R and lambda is equal to ZC that is equal to scalar and matrix P which is called a homogeneous projection matrix that is P is equal to W. Now here the W is defined as referred to as intrinsic parameter matrix and M as the exterior matrix, the two of the parameters, okay. The W is defined as an intrinsic matrix and M as an exterior matrix, you can say extrinsic matrix. Since P is equal to W into M. So WR, WT with respect to W world coordinate 2R rotational with world coordinate 2T, that is translation. Now where P is the projection matrix, I have already defined P in the last slide as well. So the vector which is defined with WR here is being taken with respect to the formula. Here we have already defined C, R and 1, the same formula that we have already seen. Here this is defined with the projection matrix and which is being multiplied with the three of the parameters that is fx1, fx2 where we have taken the common value and we have added it. Okay. So here the last matrix that we are getting is sx into f1. We have already removed the first value. We have just put it the parameters that are common where x is defined by x, y and z. Okay. So weak perspective camera model we can say that we have zc is equal to z bar. That is z bar c. So we will replacing that value in the same equation r3 into xyz plus tx. Okay, xyz means with respect to the rotational matrix. So we will get as r3 x plus tx. Okay, and we will be placing the value of the last parameter that we are finding with respect to x. We will put it here and we will get the matrix as given. So the weak perspective projection model is defined as p weak. Okay, projection matrix b f of x1, same thing f of x, sx into r1, f of sx tx plus c0 z1 because here we have taken z0, zc is equal to z bar c and we are replacing the value okay, with the parameter. So this is what the matrix is, is where r1 and r2 are the first and two rows of the r matrix and z bar c we already know that is rx plus t into z okay. and lambda is equal to zc1. The orthographic projection model that we are defining here is under the orthographic projection. Projection is parallel to the camera optical axis that we have. So we are replacing that is f of 1 zc is equal to 1. We will get u is equal to xc and y is equal to yc. Dividing both the sides by the equation that is lambda is equal to zc and applying 1 by fc to the 1 of the same uh, formula that we have got in the last slide. So c, r and 1 we are replacing the value and we will get this answer. Okay, where it is defined with the x, y, z parameter. A fine camera model, we can say that a further simplification from the weak perspective camera model is the affine camera model, which is often assumed by the computer vision researchers due to its simplicity. So the affine camera model assumes that the object frame is located on the centroid of the object being observed. So we can say that x bar is equal to x minus x bar, which is equal to delta x. This is defined with the function x bar y bar z bar is equal to x y z minus x bar y bar z bar, which is equal to delta x, delta y, delta z. This is what a fine camera model is defined and here the equation which is taken with respect to camera model, okay, camera equation. The p value with c and x, so the world coordinate that is x, y, c and z, c, which is being defined with the parameter x bar, y bar and t and it is defined with the world coordinates x, y, z. So this is what the two of the parameter which is defined with the projection as in a fine. Okay, the two of the things, first of all rotation and then translation. So both of the things are, so first of all the rotation as you can see the circle part and then the translation with respect to TTX, TY and TZ. Okay, so this is what a fine transformation is. As a result, we can get a TX, T bar X is equal to XC bar, T, T, uh, y, T bar Y is equal to YC bar and T bar Z is equal to ZC bar. And the affine perspective projection matrix is defined by the same matrix that we already got but just placing the value of that is xc is equal to x bar c yc is equal to y bar c nothing else same will be copied so here the affine projection matrix is defined as p affine is equal to sx same thing fl ifr1 sx fx bar c0 z bar c the same sy fr2 sy f yc bar plus r0 z bar c and 0 z bar c so this is what the different camera models that we have already studied and we have defined here and uh, here the topic with respect to the chapter has been completed. In the next lecture we are going to start with the next module. Thank you.